Good morning and Sairam children. Welcome to the part 2 of class 7th history chapter number 10th that is 18th century political formation. So children in uh, first part of this chapter we have discussed these two topics. First the Christ of the empire and the later Mughals and second Nadir Shah attacked over the Delhi. Okay, so these two topics we have already learned in the previous video. Now in this video, we are going to discuss the next topic, emergence of new states. Basically in India in 18th century, the Mughal Empire gradually fragmented into a number of independent regional states. So basically these states of 18th century divided into three overlapping groups. First, the old Mughal provinces. Second, the Vatan Jagis of the Rajput. And third, seizing independence. Okay. First, the old Mughal provinces, Awadh, Hyderabad and Bengal. Next, the Vatan Jagis of the Rajputs. And the last, seizing independence. The Sikh, the Marathas and the Jats. So, let's begin emergence of new states so children as we learned in the first part of this chapter that there were many factors reason behind the decline of mughal empire in india right so with the decline in the authority of the mughal emperors the governors of large provinces the governors of large provinces, subedars, and the great zamidars consolidated their authority in different parts of the subcontinent. And through the 18th century, through the 18th century, the Mughal Empire gradually fragmented into a number of independent regional states. Okay, so broadly speaking. The states of 18th century can be divided into three overlapping groups. So the first we have states that were old Mughal provinces like Awadh, Bengal, Hyderabad. Although extremely powerful and quite independent, the ruler of these states did not break their formal ties with the Mughal emperor clear second states basically that had enjoyed considerable independence under the mughals as vatan jagis and these included several rajputs okay these included several rajput now the last group included states under the control of marathas sikh and other like the Jat. Now these were of different sizes and had seized their independence from the Mughals after a long drawn armed struggle. So let's first start with the first states that were old Mughal provinces. The old Mughal provinces. So as I said states that were old Mughal provinces like Hyderabad, Awadh and Bengal. Okay. And although they have extremely powerful and quite independent and the ruler of these states, that means Hyderabad, Awadh and Bengal, the ruler of these states did not break their formal ties with the Mughal emperor. Clear? So let's see first where these all states located in India. So first Hyderabad Hyderabad is located here. It's a capital of Andhra Pradesh, right? And next we have Awadh. So Awadh is located here, right? Basically, it's uh, located in the Ganga Plain region in UP. And next we have Bengal. So Bengal is located here. That means West Bengal, eastern part of India. Okay. Amongst the states that were curved out of the old Mughal provinces in the 18th century, Three stand out very prominently, and these were Hyderabad, Awadh, Bengal. 
all three states were founded by members of high mughal nobility who had been governors of large provinces now like hyderabad this state was founded by asaf ja right next avadh so avadh state was founded by saadat khan and last one is bengal so this state founded by murshid kuli khan clear all three had occupied high mansabdari position and enjoyed the trust and confidence of the emperors so let's understand one by one so the first we have hyderabad state so hyderabad state was founded by nizam ul mulk asaf ja clear asaf ja the founder of hyderabad state was one of the most powerful members at the court of mughal emperor farik siar he was entrusted first with the governorship of awadh and later given charge of dekar he established a political and economically stable administration right so asaf jah taking advantage so taking advantage of the terminal in the dekan the competition among us the court nobility he gathered power in his hands and became the actual ruler of that region he brought a skilled soldiers and administrator from northern india who welcomed the new opportunities in the south he also appointed mansabdar and he just granted them jagis now mansabdar means an individual who holds a mansab meaning high rank or position right and jagis means mansabdar basically received their salaries as revenue assignment called jagis clear so he appointed mansabdars and he also granted jagis although he was still a servant of mughal emperor clear he was still a servant of the mughal emperor he ruled quite independently without seeking any direction from delhi or facing any interference the mughal emperor merely confirmed the decisions already taken by the nizam the state of hyderabad was constantly engaged in a struggle against the maratha and the naikas right naikas basically telugu warrior chief okay naikas telugu warrior chief of the plateau region the ambitions of the nizam to control the rich textile producing areas of the koro mandal coast in the east were checked by the british who were becoming increasingly powerful in that region now asaf jah's successor were known as nizams of hyderabad okay his successor were known as the nizams of hyderabad is it clear about the hyderabad so first of all this state was founded by nizam ul mulk asaf jah right second thing is the state of hyderabad was constantly engaged in a struggle against the maratha and the naikas that means telugu warrior chief next state we have avadh okay so the state of avadh was founded by burhan ul mulk saadat khan in the year 1722 okay so who was the founder of avadh state burhan ul mulk saadat khan in the year 1722 and founded a state which was one of the most important to emerge out of the break up of the mughal empire avadh was a prosperous region 
and controlling the rich alluvial Ganga plain and the main trade route between the North India and the Bengal. Clear? Burhanul Mulk also held the combined offices of Subedari, Diwani, and Fosdari. Okay, so in other words, he was, we can say that he was responsible for managing. Subedari means political. Right? Diwani means financial. And Fosdari means military. Right? He was responsible for managing the political, financial and military affairs of the province of Awadh. Clear? He just tried to decrease Mughal influence in the Awadh. He just tried to decrease Mughal influence in the Awadh region by reducing the number of office holders, Jagirdars, appointed by the Mughals. He also reduced the size of Jagirs and appointed his own loyal servants to vacant position. So, uh, the accounts of Jagirdars were checked to prevent cheating and revenues of all districts were reassessed by officials appointed by the Nawab court. He just seized a number of Rajput Zamidaris and agriculture fertile lands of the Afghans of Rohil Khand. So the state dependent on local banker. Right? So the Avadh state is dependent on local bankers and mahajans for loan it sold the right to collect tax to the highest bidders and these revenue farmers agreed to pay the state a fixed sum of money and the local bankers granted the payment of this contracted amount to the state and in turn the revenue farmers were given freedom in the assessment and collection of taxes so these developments allowed new social groups like money lenders, bankers to influence the management of the state's revenue system and something which had not occurred in the past. Clear? So the state of Awadh was founded by Burhan ul Mulk Sadat Khan in the year 1722 he did not like the mughal influence okay sadat khan he did not like the mughal influence in the awadh region and therefore reduced the number of office holders or jagirdars appointed by the mughals and he also reduced the size of jagis and he appointed his own loyal servants to the vacant positions clear Next state we have Bengal. Okay, so Bengal gradually broke away from Mughal control under Murshid Kuli Khan, who was appointed as Nayab. Right? He was appointed as Nayab. So Murshid Kuli Khan took the control of Bengal and began to command revenue administration of the state and he was appointed as the nayab that means deputy to the governor of the province although uh, basically never a formal subedar murshid kuli khan very quickly seized all the power that went with that office now like the uh, rulers of hyderabad and awadh he also commanded the revenue administration of the state. In an effort to reduce Mughal influence in Bengal, he transferred all Mughal Jagidars to Urisa and ordered a major reassessment of the revenues of Bengal. Revenue in his region, revenue was collected in cash with great strictness for all the Jamidars. As a result, Many zamidars 
had started had borrow money from bankers and money lenders and those unable to pay were forced to sell their lands to the larger zamindars the formation uh, the formation of regional state in 18th century bengal therefore led to considerable change amongst the zamindars the close connection between the state and bankers noticeable in hyderabad and avad as well was evident in the bengal under the rule of ali wardi khan 1740 to 1756 during his region the banking house of jagat seth became extremely prosperous clear so bengal murshid kuli khan to the control of bengal and he start begin to command the revenue administration of the state first thing he had done he transferred all mughal jagidars to odisha in order to reduce the mughal influence in bengal right second he also ordered a major reassessment of the revenue of bengal revenue was collected in cash in his region with great strictness from all zamindars so is it clear now children if we take a birds eye view so we can deduct three common features amongst these states these states that means hyderabad avad and bengal okay so we can deduct three common feature amongst hyderabad avad and bengal first Firstly many of the larger states were established by the Mughal nobles and they were highly suspicious of some of the administrative systems that they had inherited in particular the jagirdari system right secondly the method of tax collection is also differed the method of tax collection is differed rather than relying upon the officers of the state all three rigmi contracted with the revenue farmers revenue farmers okay for the collection of revenue and the practice of ijadar truly dis approved of the moguls spread all over the india in the 18th century and their impact on the countryside differed considerably now the third common feature in all these regional states were their emerging relationship with the rich bankers and merchants these people lent money to the revenue farmers and they received land as security and they collected taxes from these lands through their own agents and throughout india the richest merchants and the bankers were gaining a stake in the new political order children is it clear okay so that's it for this part so in this video we have only discussed about the old mughal provinces that means avad bengal hyderabad and these were founded by the governors under the mughal nobility okay in next video we will discuss about the watan jagirs of the rajputs and the next one is the seizing independence so that's it for today have a nice day thank you and keep learning